when when you're playing music that is 100 200 300 400 500 years uh, old and you're bringing it nowadays uh to the public that like aren't you some sort of museum keeper and the argument is always of course no that music is still valid and has still something very intrinsic to tell us about the human condition about the divine about whatever mm -hmm. um but in a way uh, that uh, the danger is that if we lose that communicative aspect of it, that in fact we do become some sort of museum keepers and that our performances turn into museum pieces that are just uh, looked at from a distance. And you say that like, yes, it's it's beautiful, but it, it doesn't speak to me in a way, mm -hmm. um, which is of course the last thing we should want because um, uh, the question is then really like how many more museum pieces do we need like that? The, yeah. Going back for instance to the recording industry, you already see that the globalization of the musical market leads mm. to the fact that in, a, in the end a handful of pianists mm. uh, would be capable, perfectly capable of providing the, the global music market with recordings of all the pieces 99% of people would ever listen to. Mm. And once you've got those recordings, why would you need another one? Why would you need to go to a concert to actually listen to that? Mm. And... Um, yeah, that's... yeah. If you go into to the world of art, of course, we have uh, paintings, eh? and then you have restoration, and buildings are being restored, and then of course you have this big problem: should we restore this palace in the original state? Uh, now you have it with organs, for example. Should no. the organ be restored to the original no. organ that it was built, or should should we also keep something that was actually restored in 1840 and changed? Or uh, uh, we uh, we're not. Um, as classical musicians, we're not in the restoration business. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that, um, uh, you know, there are art forms. So, as for example, the, the Netherlands Opera is, is, is a very well-known opera company nowadays. Mm -hmm. But, of course, many of their productions, uh, they actually change the original intentions of, mm -hmm. the, of the composer and, and uh, even change things with the, in the score to, to be able to... Uh, communicate right. with their audience, yeah. um, and you see that happening more and more. Of course, that's an aesthetic decision mm. uh, to take. Um, but it's uh, in any case uh, that type of uh, of musicking uh, is based on skills that we don't all uh, have an anymore, and that we we should be teaching to our students yeah. to prepare them for a future career right. because we have no idea what direction classical music is, is taking. No. But we have to uh, give them a broader uh, palette of skills to deal with situations they will run into in the future, yeah. which will be completely different than what we have experienced in the past, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult topic. Uh, uh, I saw recently a, uh, a video at the Globe Theatre in uh, in London. Mm -hmm. um, they have experimented with uh, productions of Shakespeare. Uh, 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 with uh, with his original with accent. original uh, yeah. accent, original. Uh, and, uh, of course, al although um, uh, that... From For, ore to ore, we wrought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's difficult to understand. Yeah. So it's not something for a broader uh, audience. Mm. But of course, the, the jokes Shakespeare is making that you can understand in the older pronunciation yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, I think that, that um, we have to realize that understanding music as it was originally meant is just as important as understanding Shakespeare the way he meant it. Mm. It's not for a broader audience. No. I don't think it is for, for a real broader audience. Uh, but I do think that we have to realize that, um, that uh, language as well as music is not divorced from the past. Uh, language is based, I mean, even, even the language we speak is based on the language Shakespeare spoke. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, um, uh, and jazz music is based on classical music, mm. among other things. Uh, as far as um, uh, your heritage, uh, I have a colleague in, in uh, Holland, I don't know if you know, Rembrandt Frerichs, mm -hmm. uh, jazz pianist. Yes, uh, I know. Right. He, he plays on a, on a Walter uh, fortepiano. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I remember, yeah. Yeah, um, why not? Yeah, uh, of course. I, I mean, uh, of course you can use a, 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 an older organ mm. uh, in a modern uh, style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why not? 
uh, and I think that um, that if if we would if organists would experiment with this sort of thing, uh, uh, that they might uh, find an audience for it. Right. Uh, I mean, Freyrich has found an audience for what he's doing. And um, uh, so, yeah, there are, are many di different possibilities uh, for musicians to mm. communicate with their audiences and to, and to communicate with diverse audiences. Right. Um, you have to want to do that. Right? You have mm. to, uh, uh, to want to communicate uh, and you want to, uh, to communicate to a particular audience. I mean, you don't, when you speak to someone, you're speaking to that person. Mm -hmm. And not just to a wall yeah. or to an audience. You're speaking to particular people who have particular expectations, and and these audiences can be very different. But uh, obviously, I think there's an audience for a lot of music. It's it's because you just mentioned jazz. It reminds me that when we were talking before about um, the uh, the the lack of feedback from the audience or the fear that comes from suddenly thinking that like I'm doing nothing to them. Uh, um, that in a way, the way the jazz circuit handles it with, for instance, like a short burst of applause uh, after a specific solo or something like that, um, is in a way, it's, it's exactly this. It's the communication between audience and the musician. The musician tells something, the audience shows its appreciation. Now, I'm not saying that we have to emulate exactly that for the classical concert. It happens concert. in opera. It happens in opera, for instance, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and nowadays it's happening even more in, in concerts that, for example, after a first movement, yeah, that the audience will start clapping. And of course, the musicians look like, well, well this is incorrect, you know, but uh, huh? uh, actually uh, we should all be wanting an audience to respond. And um, the, the question is only sometimes uh, what I realize is w when I see that happen in concerts here in our church, then like, OK, they, the first piece happens. OK, no applause. Second piece happens. No applause. Third piece happens. Oh, they really like that. And there's some applause. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But now they've applauded once mm -hmm. and now they feel the obligation to applaud after every single piece, okay, because yeah, otherwise yeah. the yeah. otherwise the musician will think we didn't like that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so. So it's yeah. it, it's tricky. You can feel in a way the the um, the awkwardness because um, we don't. There's something very comforting about uh, established traditions and where everybody knows what what they have to do. For me, as a as a church musician, one of the last things I did when I was still in Holland, I was at the Onzelieve Frauenkerk in Amsterdam, uh, the conductor and organist. And I had a, a, a Renaissance choir formed. Mm -hmm. And the idea was specifically not to perform in a concert environment, mm -hmm. but actually to perform a Josquin Mass uh, in its originally intended background, which is a Mass, yeah. to ha have it as a, in a Mass uh, with everything sung. And yeah. then I got a priest who was enthusiastic about it and who would sing all the responses and yeah. and who could even sing a reading and, and all these things. And suddenly you the whole thing gets a new dimension because you suddenly understand what you're communicating. Exactly. No? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what we want to achieve in in, in every music. Yeah, uh, exactly. Communication.